Uh, most of the legislation originates in the Legislative Assembly. There are very few bills that start in the Legislative Council and that's because usually they have money implications and it's uh, under the Constitution uh, any bill with money implications needs to start in the Assembly. We have a Westminster system which has two Houses of Parliament, so we bring the bill here um, to enable all members to have a second look at it. It's a check and balance in the system. And what's particularly important, obviously, with the Legislative Council is that the composition of the membership of this House is quite different to the Legislative Assembly. Um, we have more minor parties represented. So it gives everybody a chance to actually have a look at that bill and to scrutinise the different clauses of it, even in a committee process, um, clause by clause, to ensure that that bill is actually going to meet the intentions of the government and will have broad support in the community. Well, as it was originally you know, conceived right back in the middle of the 19th century, it was very much seen as a break on the more democratic urges of, of the lower house, the Legislative Assembly. Um, by virtue of the electoral system it had and the powers that it had, it had the capacity to um, frustrate the lower house, the government's agenda, and sometimes even break governments. It was almost always under the control of the conservative parties until the beginning of the 21st century when the Labor government, the Brax Labor government, finally won control of the Legislative Council at the 2002 election. At that point, the Brax government introduced major reforms to the upper house. Most importantly, it changed its electoral system by introducing proportional representation. The objective of that was to diversify representation in the upper house, in particular to allow more minor parties into the chamber, potentially in independence. There was also under those changes some diminishing of the powers of the council and its ability to frustrate government. The minister introduces the bill to the house and that's by way of a first reading, which is a mention, if you like, of the bill. And then he reads a second, uh, does a second reading speech for the bill, which leads to a comprehensive debate. And members, are, all members of the chamber are entitled to make a contribution on the bill. And something like Brodie's Law is actually a, a bill that has issues that all members are very concerned about and they want to achieve a, a result um, that will protect uh, young people. We have uh, three messages from the Assembly. The first is the Crimes Amendment Bullying Bill 2011. The Legislative Assembly presents for the agreement of the Legislative Council a bill for an act to amend the Crimes Act 1958. Minister. I move that the second reading speech be incorporated into Hansard. Those that opinion say aye. aye. At the conclusion of that second reading debate, it is certainly possible for us to go into committee and, and to make amendments or to uh, come to understand exactly how the bill will operate. Um, we then pass the bill by a third reading and send it back to the Legislative Assembly to indicate that uh, the Legislative Council is actually in agreement with it, having scrutinised that legislation.